As do I, gamblersadvisory.com. Just remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's say I'm unbeaten, Kell Brook, and I'm fighting at home before a sellout crowd. My community loves me. And let's say that I'm that rare fighter. I'm unbeaten. I'm young, but I'm also untested. Right? When you look at my resume, you're seeing a lot of guys who belong in witness protection. Right? You didn't even know these guys were boxers. Then you see Lovemore Andu's name, and you realize that if Lovemore Andu had fought anyone else, we'd be looking at Andu as a journeyman, an older journeyman who isn't quite championship level. Right? Now, let's say I'm Kell Brook. I know I'm untested. I also know that I have knockout power in both hands and I'm really a knockout puncher. I am not a boxer. In particular, I'm not an inside boxer. Right? My knockout ratio might not look that impressive until you look at the last few fights I've had. And let's say that I also know that my game is headhunting from the outside in. Right? I come in, I throw bombs. Not unlike David Hay. Not unlike Jean Pascal. Right? I am an outside in fighter throwing bombs primarily to my opponent's head. Occasionally I'll try to slide to the side and throw some body shots. But that's only when I know I'm having the upper hand. I'm not a guy who shows up in a fight thinking I'm going to take out his body or I'm going to take out whatever is presented to me. He guards his head, I'll kill the body. He guards his body, I'll take him upstairs. Kelbrook's not that guy. He's a headhunter. Now let's say he's fighting a KG veteran who has a vastly superior resume with nine losses, who has a vastly superior resume in terms of the quality of his opposition, right? Both guys fought Michael Jennings. Only one guy fought Jan Zavik twice. Only one guy fought Sugar Jackson. Only one guy fought Delvin Rodriguez. Those names would give Kell Brook all he can handle. Now let's say Kell Brook steps forward. Starts to throw on this guy. Has it planned, right? He has the better legs. He has the foot speed. He's home, he's young, he's nine years younger than his older KG opponent. But let's say Kelbrook comes in, he starts throwing haymakers, hooks, at the guy's head as Kelbrook does, right? Most of Kelbrook's opponents freeze, they get hit, they go down, they're out of there by the start of the seventh round. But what if this KG veteran actually has head movement? What if this KG veteran actually has a high guard, has his hands up, right? Elbows out. What if he also knows how to roll with punches? In other words, you throw on this side, he's rolling with the punch, and he's throwing back. What if it takes Kell Brook three or four rounds to figure out that the guy he's fighting is actually a defensive master who has never been knocked out. It's not the nine losses that matter, right? It's the defense and it's the chin, and Rafael Jakowicz has both. This fight is mispriced. I've seen Kell Brook as a 16 to 1 favorite. You've got to be kidding me, right? He's the inexperienced guy in this fight. Quite frankly, defensively, he's the less defensively gifted fighter in this fight. Now I'll agree that Jakowicz has a foot speed disadvantage and that Michael Jennings beat him convincingly while losing to Kell Brook. I believe Kell Brook probably wins this fight, but the bet I'm recommending because I believe he only wins it late, just like Sergio Martinez and Darren Barker last week. I think the bookies are a little bit out of line on this one. The bet I'm recommending is to take the underdog, the big underdog, right? Jakowicz, take him to win the fight, 
and then take Cal Brook from the seventh round on. Quite frankly, I think Jakowicz is going to make it late in this fight. I actually think that the 9 to 12 round mark is probably a stronger bet than the 7 to 9 mark because I think Kell Brook is going to get discouraged. Then he's going to realize that the way to beat Jakowicz is by getting on his horse, right? Because keep in mind, a more aggressive fighter, more seasoned fighter than Kell Brook, Jan Zavik went 24 rounds with Jakovic and was unable to stop him. Let me also point out too that Jakovic is old school. He did go down against Delvin Rodriguez in the middle of that fight. He, he was legitimately hurt, not a flash knockdown. He got up. He was able to survive. I understand the decision was controversial, but the heart and courage in getting off the canvas to go the distance was not. I think people are making a mistake when they undervalue KG veterans who are top 10 contenders and who have fought some serious names, including champions like Jan Zavik. I think Jackowicz is a live dog in this one. What I want to know, too, is what happens if we get to the 10th round and Kell Brook finds himself more tired than he was against Love Morandu the only time. Kell Brook has been forced to go that long. I believe that fight was uh, a 12-rounder. And what I'd like to know is what happens if Kell Brook is more tired than he was in that fight because Jakowicz is showing up to force this kid to work, right? And uh, the difference between the two fighters isn't as great as it was when Kell Brook fought Love Morandu. I like the underdog. Jakowicz to win, straddle against Kelbrook late, second half of the fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. My point to you is simply, the casinos have gotten a bit carried away. Kelbrook should not be a 16 to 1 favorite when, quite frankly, he has less defense than his opponent. He's a headhunter. And the opponent knows how to cover up his head. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.